Welcome back to Studio Chatter. As we get a bit older, we start thinking about securing our future and future of our families, and there is a lot of confusing information out there. Let's get it straight from the attorney. Welcome Kyle Dart with Dart Law to the program. Hello, Hello Kyle. Kyle. Hello. Welcome. We finally raggled him in here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. People try to like hide from us when we start to ask. <laughs> but okay, Kyle, I kind of know who you are because I was able to work with you in football and your cute wife and I've just known you guys. But tell us a little bit about you and who you are and your family. Yeah, so I'm um, Kyle Dart. I'm a local attorney here in Spanish Fork and I was born and raised in Spanish Fork, lived here my whole life. I, I moved away for about 12 or 13 years to go to school and then I worked in North Carolina and Denver, mm -hmm. Colorado for a few years and then uh, my wife and I moved back. Uh, it's been about seven years now that we moved back. And uh, we have three boys, uh, Zach, Will, and Sam. Zach is a junior, and Will is a ninth grader, and Sam is a sixth grader. So, Oh, wow. We're a lot back. of energy in that house, oh, right? And they are so energy. busy, and they're all <laughs> yeah. like fantastic little athletes. You guys, you've got a busy, fun little life. <laughs> yeah, Do you we, love being back in Spanish work? I, I love it. You know, the whole time I was gone, it was sort of my, I, I had this just itch to get back. Right. And, um, you know, I have four brothers that, that live here that I'm really close with, and a lot of my good friends, best friends, are here, and so it's been really great I to be back in it. town. I did. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great. Even though place North to live. Carolina sounds fabulous to grow, yeah, up to have some time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, Allie's family's still back there, so we we usually mm. get back there once or twice a year. And okay. Is that she, where she's from? It yep. is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she lives on a on a little island just off the coast of North Carolina. Oh, so. okay. Well, that's got a fabulous shabby. little twingy <laughs> accent that I just love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. super cute. Yep. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you've got the Spanish fork accent. I've Kyle, got the so Spanish fork <laughs> accent. True, true. Yeah. She'll some, she sometimes tells me I talk funny, and I say that's that's interesting coming from someone from the south. So, so true. So Kyle, yeah. do you specialize as a lawyer in estate planning? I do. Okay. Yeah. Explain that, because like I wouldn't even know how to explain. Like, estate do planning. we have estates? But yes, explain yeah. to us what it is. Yeah. So estate planning is is uh, an area of law that it, it really encompasses two kind of two areas. The first is um, what happens if I become incapacitated, if I'm I'm not able to handle my own affairs. Um, there's an estate planning through the estate planning process. We're able to appoint individuals to uh, to take care of our affairs, to manage our assets, to manage our our business, things like that. In the event we become in incapacitated, like you know, you get uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, or dementia, or even temporarily if you're in a coma or something like that. Um, so that's part of the estate planning process. The other part that most people think about is, you know, what happens when I die. So we've worked hard, we've acquired assets, we have a home, we have retirement accounts, we have all these things we've acquired, and I'd like to make sure that those things are passed down to the people mm -hmm. that I love. And so that that really encompasses estate planning is incapacity while in, while you're alive and then uh, make sure we have our affairs in order to, t to uh, make sure that the assets and things that we've acquired over our lives get to the people that we want them to get to. So it is quite important. I was going to say, why is it important? But it just doesn't fall to who you think it may, or someone doesn't just take charge maybe yeah. that you would want to. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a little bit of a misconception. I've had a lot of clients say, so if I don't do anything, the state gets everything. And that's not true. Mm. Okay. Uh, it doesn't just go to the state. There's what's called an intestate statute that um, dictates how your property is going to be distributed and, and in general it would eventually get to your family but having an estate plan and process or in place I think does a couple of things number one it allows you to say exactly how you want it to be so mm -hmm. the, there isn't a, there is an intestate statute that would govern what happens if you don't have anything in place but you might not like what the, the statute says and so oh. with it with a, uh, an estate plan in place you get to say how things are going to be distributed you also get to um, say who's going to administer the estate, who's going to be in charge, who am I going to ask to help make sure that my, my wishes are carried out. Um, so that's, a, that's an important part of, of estate planning. I think um, with regards to um, the, the other thing I think it's important about estate planning is when you have an estate plan in place, it's going to avoid a lot of uh, um, contention. It's going to, it's just sets very clear. This is exactly what's to happen. This is who in charge and this is how we want it to happen. And it just makes it a lot more of a seamless transition. And, uh, you know, it's something that uh, I think benefits your family greatly because it's, it's all laid out and everything's organized and taken care of. And, you know, there's a lot to deal with when, mm -hmm. when your loved one passes away. And the last thing you want to worry about is, you know, who's in charge and how are we going to make sure the assets get distributed the way and the, the way that we want them to and stuff like that. So 
makes it a little bit easier on your loved ones as well. A lot of peace of mind. Yeah. If someone hasn't ever thought about sitting down and, and done, if they haven't planned to this point, yeah. uh, how can they reach out to you to maybe set an appointment and maybe start their planning? Yeah, so uh, we, uh, the internet's obviously a great thing. They can Google me. My, our, our phone number is 801-821-4580. Um, our office, we just moved into a new office building here in Spanish Fork. Okay. A uh, new office building right behind Carl's Jr. Mm -hmm. So we have a website. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, oh, okay. and so we have a, a little bit, a lot of options to, to try to contact us. Okay, and let's talk cost and, and maybe the, a list of items someone might need to bring with them to, to start their planning. Yeah, so with regards to a basic estate plan that really fits the bill for about 99% of our clients is just, we recommend a revocable family trust, a revocable living trust, uh, a last will and testament, a general power of attorney, a medical power of attorney, and a medical directive. And so that's kind of your basic estate plan, all the documents okay. that you're at that we, we generally do. And uh, the cost is generally, I just charge a flat fee, and it's usually about $1,200 okay. for all of those documents. That would include drafting deeds to make sure we've moved property, we've properly funded your trust. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's other complexities. If you've got rental properties and things like that, we might recommend getting some LLC set up to to uh, protect yourself from some liability and so there can be some additional costs but you know I think one of the things that people think of with regards to estate plan is it costs thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of yeah, dollars mm -hmm. and it really doesn't and at the end of the day it actually saves you money in the long run because without an estate plan in place you go through the probate process or if you become incapacitated and you have to go through a guardianship process those are a lot more expensive really? than just setting yeah, up. Yeah, When uh, you just said twelve hundred dollars I was like oh yeah, that's right. not what right. I was thinking, I would have thought it would have been thousands. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. I, I think the other thing is I, I, I joke with clients a lot because I'll meet with someone and they'll say, okay, I, I know what I want, I'm going to get back to you, and then they have a really hard time deciding how to, you know, who to put in charge and how to, how to divide up assets. And one thing I tell clients all the time is any decision you make is better than not making one at all. The documents, you know, a living trust, they're amendable. They can be changed and modified as life, you know, if life changes. And so... Um, procrastinating because you're not sure what to do is, is, right. is uh, the scariest part yeah, maybe. It really probably is but like I said just making a decision getting something in place is better than just not doing anything at all and then if life circumstances change and, and the documents need to be amended it's a really easy process okay. to do that. I have a question what age like what? like at what point in life do you do we come to you? Is yeah. it like in your 30s or can you or wait like more is it your like 60s? Maybe, like my girls have children, yeah. like maybe it's important yeah. well, at that it's, age. It's, it's a really good question. I mean, I guess the, the, the first thing that comes to mind is any age because we don't know when we're going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think it, a lot of times people think, well, I'll just wait till I get older. That's when, when I have stuff. But, you know, one thing that people don't think about a lot is if you've got children, young children, if something happened to you and your husband, you and your wife while you're on vacation or something, in the estate planning process, we actually make sure that we appoint guardians over our minor children, so we Absolutely. get to have a say, you know, who's going to take care of our children if something happened to the mm -hmm. two of us while we're on vacation or riding in a car or something. So, I, you know, I think at any age, um, I think if you've got children, I think if you've got any real property, a house, something like that, okay. then it's, it's time to get I was going to say, it's not really it. for the wealthy wealthy, right? It's for the average everyday person with maybe homes it, and, you yeah. know, a home. Yeah, it's, yes. really, it's really for everyone. And I, I've done estate plans for, you know, people just starting out with young children to, you know, uh, executives at, you know, big companies that mm -hmm. have millions and millions of dollars. So it's, it's a little bit, everyone needs it. It can benefit. Um, and bless everyone's lives and if you know if you have children if you have a home things like that and once you draft a plan how often should you be updating those plans? <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's a really good I'm question. not guilty <laughs> I'm just saying I, I, I usually encourage clients to take a look at it every few years I mean it's not something that you have to you know check out check out on a monthly basis or anything like that but I think especially when, when um, you know, you have big life circumstances with kids, your children get married, your children become adults. Obviously, a, a divorce is something, a, a situation where you should uh, review an estate plan and make sure that with a divorce that you've, you've uh, cleared up some, some um, uh, conflicts that may, may uh, okay. be in your documents, things like that. So big life, life um, events, I think, is an important time. And, you know, other than that, every every few years is certainly enough. It's not something you have to review and change all the time. It's good. I know it's it good first made me think about it when I had to have a surgery, and they have you kind of 
do you have a will and a trust? And yeah. I was like, do I need one? You know, we have a house and a couple of cars. <laughs> but then it made us think what would happen to our children, say I, something happened to me, and then where would that put Rhett? And so it made us kind of jot some things down. And yeah. so yeah, stuff like that. True. Good information. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for yeah. coming and sharing this. Yes. You're very yeah. welcome. Yeah, the topic I've never you really- You just don't go to court as an attorney. You do other things <laughs> yeah, that are very important things. for us. I, I, I appreciate you guys having me. It's fun. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks so much. Coming up next on Studio Chatter, Valentine's Day is coming up, but are there things that you don't want? Stay with us.